Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, classmates. I'm Kristen Frey L. Magdangal. And now, let us proceed with the types of teacher-made tests. But before that, let us define what is assessment method. Assessment method is a way of assessing students depend on the learning outcome to be measured. An assessment method can be classified as traditional and authentic method. First is the traditional method. Traditional assessment methods refers to the usual paper and pencil test and this is the main focus of our learning unit. Second, the authentic assessment methods refers to non-paper and pencil tests and it is also called as alternative assessment. Example of authentic assessment tools are demonstrations of what have been learned by either a product or a performance. Specifically, is example is um, oral recitation. Now, let us proceed with the paper and pencil test. The development of paper and pencil tests requires careful planning and expertise in terms of actual test construction. The more seasoned teacher can produce true or false items that can even higher order thinking skills and not just rote memory learning. Essays are easier to construct than the other types of objective tests, but the difficulty in scoring essay examinations teachers from using this particular form of ex examination in actual practice. Paper and pencil tests categorize a selected response and constructed response. Under the selected response are the alternative response or the true or false. Second, the matching type and the multiple choice. And now under the constructed response is the completion, short answer, essay, and problem solving. But before we go to our main focus, we have to know how to prepare a table of specification or a TOS before constructing a test. So what is table of specification? The table of specification or TOS is a tool used to ensure that a test or assessment measures the content and thinking skills that the test intend to measure. Thus, when used appropriately, it can provide response content and construct validity evidence. A TOS may use for a large scale test construction, classroom level assessments by teachers, and psychometric scale development. It is a foundational tool in designing tests or measures for research and educational purposes. The importance of doing TOS is in order to ensure that the test we construct is valid and reliable. Valid in a sense that all of the topics, all test items will be placed inside the TOS and are those in lesson plan. And also, all those discussed by the teacher. TOS help teachers frame the decision-making process of test construction and improve the validity of teachers' evaluation based on tests constructed. TOS help teachers to identify the types of tests they need to include on their test. Table of specification identify the achievement domains being measured and to ensure that a fair and representative sample of questions appear on the test. TOS provides the teacher with evidence that a test has content validity, that it covers what should be covered. In constructing a table of specification, there are parts might not be included, but there are parts that can be added depends on the policy of the institution you belong. Also, before constructing a table of specification, you must already discuss the topic that covers your test. Now, here are the parts of table of specification. First, A, the content topics or the learning unit covered. B, the number of hours. C, the percentage of overall total number of hours. D, the objectives or the lesson outcomes. E, for the numbers of items and lastly the percentage of overall total items. Let's now proceed with the steps in preparing table of specification. First, list down the topics covered for inclusion in the test. Second, determine the objectives to be assessed by the test. Third, specify the number of days or hours spent for teaching a particular topic. Fourth, determine the percentage allocation 
for the test item for each of the topics covered. Here's the first step to identify the total number of hours acquired per content, topics, or learning unit covered. Total number of hours per topic over total numbers of hours equals the answer times 100%. For example, Mrs. Ledesma utilized 10 hours for teaching the unit on photosynthesis. She spent 2 hours in teaching the topic chemical processes. What percentage of test items should she allocate for the topic? So in computing with the formula given, 2 divide 10 is equal to 0 0.20 times 100 is equal to 20%. So to determine the number of the items for each topic, this can be done by multiplying the percentage allocation for each topic by the total number of items to be constructed. Example, Mrs. Ledesma decided to prepare a 50-item test on the unit photosynthesis. How many items should she write for the chemical processes? So, 50 items times 0 0.20 is equal 10 items. Now, in public school, they most commonly use this type of test item. For the first column, the objective comes from the competencies, and the second column is the number of days taught, third column, the number of items, and the fourth column is the percentage, and the last column is the test of placement. And now, let us go with the main topic, the teacher-made test. Teacher-made tests are constructed by the classroom teachers to assess the progress of the students based on objectives and competencies covered. Under teacher-made test, we have true or false, multiple choice, matching type, completion, and essay. Now, let us proceed in constructing true or false type of test. Binomial choice or alternative response tests are tests that have only two options such as true or false, right or wrong, yes or no, good or better, check or cross out, and so on. A modified true or false test can offset the effect of guessing by requiring students to explain their answer and to disregard the correct answer if the explanation is incorrect. Here are some rules of thumb in constructing true or false items. Rule number one, do not give a hint in the body of the question. Example, the Philippines gained its independence in 1898 and therefore celebrated its centennial year is in 2000. So obviously here, the answer is false because 100 years from 1898 is not 2000 but 19. 98. Rule number two, avoid using the words always, never, often, and other words that tend to be either always true or always false. Example, Christmas always falls on a Sunday because it is a Sabbath day. So this is statement, use the word always, are almost always false. A test-wise student can easily guess his way through a test like this and get high score even if he does not know anything about the test. So rule number three, avoid long sentences as these tend to be true. Keep sentences short. Rule number four, avoid trick statements with some minor misleading word or spelling anomaly, misplayed phrases, etc. A wise student who does not know the subject matter may detect this strategy and thus get the answer correctly. Example, Raven was written by Edgar Allan Poe. So, Allen misleaded and the answer is false. Rule number five, avoid quoting verbatim from reference materials or textbooks. This practice sends the wrong signal to the students that is necessary to memorize the textbook word from word and thus acquisition of higher level thinking skills is not given due importance. Rule number six, avoid specific determiners or giveaway qualifiers. Students quickly learn that strongly worded statements are 
more likely to be false than true. For example, statements with never know all or always, moderately worded statements are more likely to be true than false. Statements that are moderately worded use many, often, sometimes, generally, frequently, or some usually should be avoided. Rule number seven, avoid a grossly misappropriate number of either true or false statements or even patterns in the occurrence of true or false statements.